And welcome back to another fabulous episode of <laughs> All oh, My Favorite People Are Dead. Well, oh, here we go again, Shannon. Well, Sue, I'm so glad to be doing it with you. Me too, because there's no one else that could handle talking about dead stuff, people, yeah. with me. Yeah. So it's you get lot. like a gold medal. I, <laughs> you know? We say that about my family. I'm like, Dad. You deserve a fucking medal. Yeah. I don't know how you put I, up with my mom. I love my mom. Yeah. I, love my, I, I love both my parents. Your parents are great. But my dad deserves a medal. Yeah. Well, as I mean. do you for working with me <laughs> on this subject matter. I mean, dead people, I, I do dead people all day long. That's what I do for a living. So. It's true. See, I don't as a teacher. Well, right. I mean, well, when I teach history, but over, yeah. well, yeah, when I teach history, but overall. But you, no, you deserve a medal because you do it with children. I could not do that. Yeah. I just, no. The, the problem is <laughs> children think I'm old. They don't understand You're age. Old. You tell that to an eight-year-old. Hmm. And, you know, when I try and, and explain, and so now I'm at that point where I say, um, you know, I had a pet dinosaur, and they, yeah, and they go, oh, really? And I go, no. And then, you know, once in a while, I'll get one that goes, you're not that old. And, you know, because they have no, are you as old as my mom? Are you as old as my grandmother? Is you, are you oh as old as God? You know, they, they don't. So That's when you go, I am God. You know, so I say things like, well, you guys learned about Abraham Lincoln, right? And they go, yeah. I said, well, I asked him to go to prom with me. But he didn't want to go because I was too old for him. <laughs> so, and then sometimes they, they think I'm serious. Children have no concept of age. Right. You, right. They think teenagers are senior citizens. They don't know. <laughs> oh, she drives. She's 16. So she's she's old as you. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they, so you, you talk to a kid doesn't understand the concept of my mom's age, my grandmother. They know old and that's it. Yeah. You know, so if you're eight, you know, and, and I said, well, you're eight, so I'm like 13. Oh, okay. You know, <laughs> kids kids are funny that way. But, you know, talking about... Well, you deserve a medal for working with them because I couldn't... Thank you. The populations I've had in, in my career, mm. yeah, sometimes I say, even I say to myself, what the hell are you doing, woman? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's like kamikaze work. So talking about dead people is actually fairly easy because they, they don't talk back. They don't talk back. Yeah, yeah, they they can't. You know, if you screw up something that you like their name, which we do inadvertently numerous times, mostly because I have a hard time pronouncing something. So I'm like, uh, I just I mess that? up names. I don't yeah. mean to, right. and then you add in some foreign names or a right, yeah. couple of vowels that don't look like they belong together. Uh-huh. You know, if everybody was named John Smith, I would be able to pronounce You're it right. better. Yeah, <laughs> but I like like today's woman. I'm gonna okay. Ready? Ready. I I think it's pronounced. Theta. Theta. That's, That's how word. I would pronounce it. Uh-huh. Watch somebody say it's pronounced Theta or Thoda, but I think it's T H E D A Theta. Theta. That's a really pretty name. Like Theo, right? Yeah. I would pronounce that that way. Theta, Theta. Barra. Okay. Barra. Okay. So now we have done um, we have we have done Vampira, right? And Elvira first, Vampira. Well, even before that, who knew was Theta Barra? So she's an early uh, the, legendary... Oh, the original vamp is that. what she's referred to. So I, I, I had come across her, and, I, and as soon as I see the word vamp or vampire, uh-huh. you know, my senses go, my little like, antenna ooh. guy, oh, oh, read, read more, read yeah. more. So she was born Theodosia Goodman. I love that name, Theodosia. Theodosia. I love that name. It's like Theodore, it, right? It's a long, um, very pronounced, very, very uh, artsy. Very 19th century. Very, very classy name. Very classical. Yeah, Theodosia. Theodosia. I love that. July 29th, 1885, she became an overnight sensation. Okay. When director Frank Powell cast her as the star of a movie called A Fool There Was way back in 1915. Whew. So she became, day. yeah, long time ago. She, when I was a kid, she became the original quote unquote vamp. Here's where we start with the vamp. Okay. Um, uh, she became a temptress who can squeeze the money, the dignity, and the life out of men. 
fun. Nah. <laughs> Sign me up. You go, girl. I'm in the world wide of work. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> she became an icon of sensuality um, and the exotic mm. for generations. So think of this ex- exotic, foreign, sensual woman who will squeeze the life out of a man. I that's mean, what I want to way ahead of her time. Is it, right think, at yeah. that time. I, that's what I want to be when I grow up. Mm-hmm. Okay. She had um, dark, exotic look about her. Mm. She had the veils and the bangles, and that really helped create the archetype of this seductive vamp. I love it. But you know, think right, the dark haired woman with the veils and the you know what the woman bracelets and the ankle bra- and and it, it's it's all looking good. Yeah. Nineteen fifteen, right? But she had a very short-lived career oh. because tastes change. People are finicky. The American that's audience true. is very finicky. And that stuff like that was a little over the top for its time. It anyway. was over the top. They yeah. loved to. First, they were like, what the hell? And then they, oh, she's great. Nope, next. No, Done. Yeah. Done with you. No, okay? they wanted a more all-American girl. They wanted now. more wholesome, yeah. someone, a different starlet. That's okay. A, that's Amer- You know, America is so funny how we will be like, ooh, that's sexy. But, oh, wait, I'm a Puritan. I can't. Yeah, right. No, I can't be sexy. Can't. This is not right. I, I like it. I want to wear it, but I can't. Right. Cover it up, modify it, yeah, bring it back, exactly. do it over. It, it is. Yeah. And in certain lines of work, like like hers, it, 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 that's it. Flesh in the pan, you're done. Right. Yep. Okay? She was one of the most uh, popular screen actri- actresses of our era. Mm-hmm. She was one of cinema's earliest sex symbols, way back when, in the day. Okay. Her femme fatale roles earned her the nickname The Vamp, referring <laughs> to a popular slang term of that time for a predatory, uh, sexually predatory woman, a vamp, Ooh. like vampire. And okay? that's, a, that's really a no, no, no. No, that, no, no. Nobody wants a vampire. Yeah, mm. Well, every man does, but, mm. you know, vampire. Mm-hmm. Hollywood's first vampire actress she received a thousand marriage proposals, <laughs> even had the, the fans, they named their kids after her. I mean, she mm. was the cat's meow, okay? Oh, very appropriate phrasing for the time, the cat's meow. Uh, it, it, thank you. Nice, yeah. I like it. <laughs> okay, so now until she was 30, the silent film actress, until she was 30, right? Mm. She, she, she started this late in life. It's not like she was a kid. Oh. She, her career was unremarkable, and then suddenly she became this mysterious channel between sex and evil, this sultry star, all right? Took her till 30 to find fame. Um, huh. she it's became, never too late, folks. Yeah, no, it's not too late. But, but you know, you expect when you, you expect a young girl. Mm-hmm. You don't expect, you know, 30 already, especially, right. you know, people age. You're, think, you're thinking more like 18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like barely she, she was doing stuff. Yeah. Didn't, didn't come to her. Um, the, but then the public couldn't get enough of her. Okay. The vamp. With the large black eyes, mm. accentuated with the heavy coal makeup, set off with the the dead white face, with the big mm. black eye, like Cleopatra, right? Yeah. She would use elaborate props, like a tiger skin rug, Ooh. a long gold c- cigarette holder, um, she, the veils, the crowns, the large hoop earrings, the bronze bangles, the long dark hair. The voluptuous figure draped in a low-cut gauzy gown, right? Mm -hmm. The vamp, you're right, everybody gets the picture I'm conjuring up here. Okay. She perpetuated a familiar stereotype of European passion and exoticism. She's Mm -hmm. foreign. She's exotic. Mm -hmm. Ooh. At the same time, the character was created as a popular image of a woman of sensual and powerful means. Mm -hmm. She was sensual. She was powerful. She ain't fooling around. I see that in her. She's got this very interesting glare. Yeah. Her stare. That's the look. Very, yeah. That's the, the look. That's the look. Yeah. That that look that, you know, come here, you know, I'm a, don't mess with me. Yeah. Yeah, right? Uh, you know, that, that um, what's it called now? Resting bitch face. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's a little bit of that. Going a on. vamp would dominate and triumph over men. Okay? Now that was a clear contrast with the clean-cut waspy images right. portrayed at that time by Mary Pickford and Lillian Gish and women of the day. Oh, yeah, the, the little sweethearts. The, sweet, the America's yeah. sweethearts, right? She defended herself, Theta, uh, that the vampire, right, quote-unquote, I play, is vengeance upon my sex, upon its exploiters. You see, I have the face of a vampire, but the heart of a feminist. But she also worried about the image she perpetuated. I try to show how how attractive sin might be, how very beautiful, so that one must always be on the lookout and know evil when it is in disguise. Mm. Oh, words to live by. All yeah. right. 
Besides, she added, whenever I try to be nice and a good little thing, you all stay away from coming to see my pictures. True enough. Okay. The more trouble you cause, the more people want to know about you and so read about you. This exotic, foreign, dark-haired vamp was born Theodosia Burr Goodman in the foreign, very far place of Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> Right? That's out there. <laughs> yeah, that's exotic. Cincinnati. She was named after the daughter of U.S. Vice President Aaron Burr. Theodosia, but that's exactly okay. what I was thinking. Yep. Theodosia Burr, yeah. Her father was Bernard Goodman, a, pros- a prosperous a Jewish tailor from Poland, and her mother, Pauline uh, Louise, uh, was born in Switzerland. So, nice Jewish girl from Cincinnati. Okay. Yeah, go figure. Okay. okay. All right. Most of Barra's early films were shot along the East Coast, where the film industry was centered at that time, pri- uh, primarily at Fox Studios in Fort Lee, New Jersey. Yeah, that was really early. That on, was early. When okay. Hollywood wasn't yet a thing. Not yet yeah. out there here. Right. Uh, forgetting her Jewish heil- childhood in Ohio, Theta Barra is an anagram of Arab death. Ooh. Yeah, that's a little spooky. Okay. But that was an anag- I don't know who came up with that. I couldn't find that out. Okay. But she she was um, born in the shadows of the pyramids. <laughs> she was French. She trained in Paris with fellow screen siren Sarah Bernhard. Oh, Sarah Bernhard. Yeah, oh. in reality, she had never been to France. She oh. couldn't find it on a map. It was all <laughs> part of an attempt to elevate her star power. Okay, all right. So it's all, it's all part of the Crap. Act. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> it's all crap. smoke and mirrors, people. Okay. <laughs> France? Yes, I think that's in Europe. But aren't you from France? Oh, that's right. No, I was born outside the Sphinx. Yeah. All righty. In Cincinnati. In Cincinnati. Um, okay. So while promoting the 1917 film Cleopatra, her publicist falsely, falsely claimed that she was the daughter of an Arabian sheik and a French woman born in the Sahara. And they build up this great image of an exotic, wanton woman. I guess that's more exciting than being a Jew. A Jew from Ohio? (laughs) You tell me. Yeah. mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah, just a little. (laughs) Her publicist claimed she dabbed in the occult. Mm. She would often pose with uh, live crows, which gave a demonic feel to the shoot. Okay. Okay. In other points of her career, she was described as an Egyptian-born daughter, a French actress, an Italian sculptor, all, (laughs) you name it, she was their daughter. They really uh, sold her. Huh? They sold it. Yeah. To feed the American audience's thirst for all things exotic and Middle Eastern. Mm. So, you know, there right. you go. It's At that time, that's what everybody wanted. Sure, it was sure. all foreign. People had never been there. It was all exotic. She was famed not only for her demonic parts, but also for her skimpy costumes. Oh. So now, think back to the day. She's wearing gauzy, elaborately sequined, almost n- nude-like, you know, caftans, oh heavily cold eyes, pasties. Uh, oh. <laughs> this is what she's wearing then. Okay. With the bangles and the thing. You, you, it conjures up an image. Yeah. Not of a nice Jewish girl from Ohio. <laughs> it reminds me of that Frank Zappa song, <laughs> Jewish Princess. Oh, J J A P yeah, yeah, the J yeah, there you go. Kinda, kinda. I want a dirty little Jewish princess. Yeah, la, la, pretty la. much. Pretty much. <laughs> Sorry. Her costumes were so risque that some of them were banned under the 1930 production code as bosses tried to regulate films from being too racy or too inappropriate for mass audiences. Mm. Okay. She had songs written about her, children named after her, a perfume named after her, and the greatest honor ever, you could have a sandwich named after you. <laughs> what was in a Theta Barra? Yeah, what is? What? Minced ham, mayonnaise, a slice of pimento, and sweet pickles on ter- toast served warm. I guess they didn't get, they, they really didn't realize she was Jewish. Right? Nobody, it doesn't, yeah, yeah, not with the ham. Not with the ham. But it doesn't matter. Okay. No. And ham with mayonnaise, no, you know. Jews don't eat meat and mayo anyway. But okay. that's another... Anyway, forget about it. All right? On, on warm. It has to be warm. Okay? Mm. How many people can say that a sandwich named after them? Uh, no, I, I had a latte named after me at my oh, local... Oh, did you? Aww. At the, the, there was a little cafe where I lived, and yeah. I went in there so much, so often, and I finally said, look, I want... Can you guys make me something special? And they're like, like what? I'm like, I don't know, like a... Uh, uh, a mocha latte with like some raspberry syrup in that and they're like oh that sounds amazing they made it and they're like we're gonna call this the shannon oh that's adorable so cute so i can go to this place and have a shannon (sighs) 
They're not really open anymore. Oh. No. If they named the soup Teresi sandwich, I bet, bet it would be like a lot of bologna. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so she had a sandwich. I don't okay, know. That's no one cool. named the sandwich after me. No, All right. I don't have I a don't sandwich know. named after me. I don't know. You know. Okay. All right. Uh, magazines of the time referred to her as the arch torpedo of domesticity. Uh, the what? queen. Yeah, I'm not. <laughs> I'm glad I said that correctly the first time. The queen of vampires, the wickedest woman in the world, Purgatory's ivory angel, the devil's handmaiden, and the priestess. The priestesses of sin. <laughs> so right now, the only song going through my head now, like I'm really getting all these songs that are popping up, but now uh, I got that, new, that 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 Doja Cat song in my head. Which one? Mm, she a devil. That's she it. A bad little yeah, bitch. yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. yeah. That's what they would be playing okay. now with this woman. Okay. This is how <laughs> the magazines were referring to her. <laughs> all of this and. You know, not all of this, you know? Okay. Uh, she lived with her family in New York. When, when she was first starting out, she was a struggling actress. But like I said, in, then, in her, in her th- about 30, she was finally cast. And uh, that woman, uh, that, that, that movie, A Fool, for La, a Fool There Was, uh, was about a single woman with a love of velvet and fur and mm-hmm. jewels. And she seduces a married man and, and gets him for every cent. Mm-hmm. That was the movie, and that's what stuck with her. Okay. Men and women, everyone was captivated by this silver screen newcomer who seemed to appear out of nowhere and causing havoc among other favorite actors and actresses. Hmm. They were all like, whoa, who's she? Yeah. Who the one? Who, who's she? <laughs> now, it's not known why she was initially and finally cast by Fox in these early films. It's claimed that now she's pushing 30. She's around 30. Okay. She has no money. She'll work for Bupkis, you know, and they hired her and it took off. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the titles of her films here, and I'm just like... Yeah, wait, 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 I got them. Yeah, wait, wait. (laughs) The studio's chance paid off between 1915 and 1918. She appeared in 33 films. Yeah, I got some of the titles. (laughs) The Galley Slave, Uh Sin, Mm -hmm. Destruction, The Serpent, The Tiger Woman. The Tiger Woman. uh Uh-huh. The Rose of Blood, The Forbidden Path, and When a Woman Sins. Is that what you got? Ooh, yeah. I, yeah, I'm looking at the, yeah, when, some of the when Men Desire. When Men Desire. The siren Song. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so you're getting, you're getting, I mean. Mm. The She-Devil. Oh. So this is where she got ty- oh. uh, typecasted, is that the word? A little bit. A little bit. So <laughs> after 1919, Fox refused to renew her contract. Oh, no. And more significantly, by 1920, the movie industry had reached the larger public. Filmmakers like Cecil B. DeMille cleaned up the vamp image for a wider audience. Uh, uh, so no longer menacing and mysterious stars like Clara Bow and Louise Brooks, they were exuding now. We're going back to the cleaner image of uh-huh. sex and sex sexuality. I mean... Now, here's another thing. Okay. All these films were silent. All silent. Yeah. All silent, no talkies at all. Right. And the other terribly sad thing, only one of these films actually remains... I'm looking at the, they're all lost. Because uh, all the of Fox them. vault had a fire. <gasps> That's right. Most of the studio silent films were destroyed in a huge blaze at a warehouse uh, in New Jersey. All of her work is gone. Yeah, there's like one film left. I mean, it's, it's pretty bad. Uh. Theta Barra never appeared in a talkie. With her career coming to an end in 1926, uh, um, short films, 45 minutes from Hollywood. Uh, she went, she got married. British actor director Charles uh, Barabin in 21. They never had children. They stayed married until her death in 55 from stomach cancer. And she's buried in uh, Forest, Lawn, Forest Lawn Memorial Park Aww. in Glendale. Oh, how sad. Theta Barra created with her characterization of the quote unquote vamp um, an enduring image of female sexuality in American popular culture. But tragically, A Fool There Was was the only one that, that survived intact. Aww. So, you know, um, her femme fatale roles earned her the nickname The Vamp. And we all know Vamp is short for vampire. Yeah. Uh, meaning, not, not, not just, you know, the, the, the one that turns into a bat and flies around and bites you on the neck, mm-hmm. but a seductive woman. That was really what a vamp was. Yeah. Um, it, it fueled the rising popularity in vamp roles based in, in sexual domination, exoticism. Sh- so, you know, they're, they're lost, they were destroyed, but uh, she never appeared in sound. And she's often cited as the, as the inspiration. 
you know, we, we had done uh, Vampira. Right. And, you know, we briefly talked about Elvira, but, but this was then. You know, although um, Vampira was uh, really shocking in the 50s, mm-hmm. you can imagine how shocking this was at that time. Oh, sure. In the teens, yeah. in the late teens. And, um, you know, I just, I happened to come across her in, in an article, in a, in a Jewish women's article. And I was like, oh, no, that can't be right. You know, I was like, oh, Gesundheit. Oh, it's these are the truth. Oh, Bless you. I'm allergic to cats. No, You're allergic joking. to Jews. No, no, and, no. <laughs> and, you know, I, and I came across it and I said, there, there's, you know, somebody to, and you try to look at her films and you mm. really can't. But those stills, if anybody wants to take take pictures of her boy, you know, take a look at those. Ooh. That was something, you know, looking yeah. at her, She looks like this no, she's Cleopatra, lovely. you know, Ooh. beauty. Yeah. And, and in the day, that, that exotic foreign flair. Oh, damn, that Cleopatra outfit is yeah. uh, Did you see that? quite yeah. revealing. Yeah. Right? For, for the that, day. For that time, yeah. That, for the day. That's like something like uh, um, Cardi B would walk yeah, on. Yeah, you know, right, today, you know? right. Like Everything old is new again. Yeah. So not like how Liz Taylor looked in the movie. Yeah. You know, this is like the, you know, the, the truth. And, you know, who would have thought? Oh, well, she was born, you know, by the Sphinx. And, you know, she was born. No. <laughs> Try Ohio. <laughs> the exotic, exotic place. The land of Ohio. In Cincinnati, <laughs> you know, but but that's how they played it up. It yeah, was a they, fascinating story. I thought it was fascinating and worth cool, sharing. Yeah. And yeah. Um, I thought she was gorgeous, I just think you're beautiful right. and sexual and powerful. Yeah. And and everything I think women secretly desire and men secretly fear. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's some truth to that. I think, yeah. You know. Yeah. So that that was our our story of Theta Bauer. I, I'd look. say try to look at her films, but you know, it doesn't look like you could have much luck. What a shame! Yeah. And all of that. Never, you can imagine if she went and did a talkie. Yeah. What What would have happened after that? But so they they had this you know ivory soap image, and then she comes in, then they go back to it because American American audiences are fickle. Yeah. Oh, Here sure. they go tomorrow. Yeah. It's true. You know. Well, that was fascinating. So, yeah, I I thought it was a story yeah. worth noting. Yeah. Yeah. I love old old Hollywood and old, Me too. old things like that. Yeah, you think of the glitter and the glitz and yeah. the glam and the vamp and you know how with the long cigarette and the bang. I just yeah, I it's it. it's just so so pretty. I think we should we should dress like that for Halloween. Oh well, okay. Um, get okay. your nude okay. gauze caftan and nobody needs to see that. <laughs> nobody, nobody, we'll get nobody. that. You know, I have the bangles. <laughs> you know, I have I have the jewelry and the black eyeliner. There but, you go. You know, that's a start. You could definitely be a Hollywood. Oh, Hollywood listen to you. Oh, yeah. you were, you were you too kind. Thank you. I think you could. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I, I'd say you know she, she was a, a young, a young Jewish me. Nobody wants to see see a middle aged Jew doing that. <laughs> I can tell you that. That's not gonna happen. Well, I'll listen yeah. to you. You're you're very yeah, sweet, sure. and thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Anytime. Um. So right. there you go. There we go, folks. Another fabulous, fascinating episode of. of all, All my favorite, favorite people, people are, are dead. dead. See ya, breathers. Bye. All my favorite people are dead. All my favorite people are dead. I said,